I'm starting a new series called, uh, well, it doesn't have a name. It's just Spring Birds with Blossoms. Just getting ready for uh, the spring season. I love this time of year when the birds start coming back. I've started to hear them in the mornings. And also, um, especially up in the northern climate where we live in Illinois, uh, there's just such a deep freeze. And then uh, to have the buds, and the flowers start coming up is just such a joy. And um, I was looking, I'm in Illinois, so I was looking up the, some of the, I mean, I'm familiar with a lot of them, but I wanted to know uh, what, uh, if I Googled blossoms on trees in Illinois, what would come up. And the five, uh, first five that came up were the Eastern red bud, which is one of my favorites. And then uh, the carnelian cherry dogwood, wood, which I wasn't that familiar with. Um, and I, but when I've seen it, when I saw the picture of the whole tree, I realized, oh yeah, I've seen that before. It kind of reminds me of a forsythia tree with the yellow uh, blossoms. But when you look up close, the blossoms are really cool. They're really like lacy um, and feathery almost and uh, so they're a little different than like the crab apple um, or the quince which I also am excited to paint um, there's also another one called the Carolina silver bell that is a really cool spring blossom but so today I'm painting this little young titmouse he's still got the orange around his beak which is just the most adorable thing and so I just had so much fun painting this bird and then um, I added the uh, little lacy uh, ch cherry dogwood uh, blossoms starting to sprout out. So um, yeah, just everything about this painting just was melting my heart today and I just had so much fun doing it. Um, so as far as the technique, I'm just using a gessoed board that I had prepared with uh, three coats of gesso and um, it's birch plywood, which is a good bur uh, board because it doesn't uh, warp or crack easily. That and maple are two very good archival woods to use for painting on. Uh, but with oil paint, you definitely need the gesso. You still would with acrylic too. But uh, for gesso or for oil paint, I put at least three coats of gesso on. And then I dry and sand them so it's between layers. So it's quite the process. I also use three types of sandpaper. You can look, um, I'll put a link down below if you want to see the whole process. Um, because I have a video on that. Uh, so here I am just uh, painting some of the shadow area of his belly and um, I did use a reference bird for uh, a photo I found online that was like a, a copyright or like a royalty free image but I didn't um, use the same pose. I just really wanted to use it for reference to see what the young bird's beak look like and then I just put him in a little simple pose and I didn't make his tuft on his head too strong because um, he was so young and um, I just wanted him to have a little bit of a more gentle it might even be a girl I don't know <laughs> um, personality and um, the background is a mixture of cadmium red with a little bit of a, might be a Persian rose. It's an opaque color. Let me go get it real quick. I'll see what it is. It's by Michael Harding. <clears throat> oh, it's, it's called Brilliant Pink actually. So I was just going to use cadmium red, but I felt like that was a little too, um, <clears throat> I don't know, just with the spring, I like a little bit of the pinker tones. So I added this brilliant pink to my palette. I also have some light cadmium red on my palette. And then I've got two kinds of yellow too. I have a cadmium yellow medium and then a permanent yellow. And I, I just kind of mix those 
for the I use the permanent which is more transparent for the darker yellows and then the cadmium mixed with white uh, for various shades of the highlights on the little blossoms I also did tone down the brilliant pink with a little bit of um, uh, the green mixture and added some white to it <clears throat> sometimes I paint on a prepared background that's um, I'll use some of my extra paint and just smear it on uh, these simple boards to create a colored background to work on and I usually won't go too dark it has to be no darker than the values of these yellows um, or the gray on his uh, little tummy uh, because you don't want to I don't like to work on a really dark background uh, but um, I don't mind working on white either I just like to cover all the white spaces as much as possible but working on the colored background can sometimes um, help with the values and also it can help uh, just add some interest to the areas that are I would be more likely to leave open areas uh, just to show a little bit of the background color now this brush I'm using um, is a synthetic sable and it's I forget the name of the company but it's um, got an orange handle so if you see some with orange handles I think it's Raphael actually they're pretty affordable uh, substitute for if you're an artist watching this and are interested they're pretty affordable substitute for the real sable <clears throat> uh, I it does leave a little bit of streaking because I left it for an entire week while I was on vacation and I think there's a little paint in it I try to put my uh, brushes after cleaning them if I'm going away on a trip for a few days and I'm not going to use them I will either do a very good cleaning with a brush soap and condition them and then I'll leave a little bit of the soap in them uh, just to keep them stiff until I return and maybe even dip them in some oil to keep them conditioned um, but uh, another alternative is I will clean them with the uh, thinner the Gamsol is what I use or um, whatever solvent you're using and then I will uh, put a little oil on them again and then I will dry them and uh, shape them and actually put them in a Ziploc bag uh, tied with a rubber band around uh, the near the brush and I will put them in the freezer <laughs> till I get back and that usually helps I didn't do that this time and so the tip of the Raphael brush was a little stiff and it was leaving I'm gonna try to clean it later to see if I can get um, some of the stiff areas more pliable but I actually don't mind uh, for this small painting that it's uh, having the effect it does there's something about the highlight in the eye that just makes the whole uh, bird come to life I also like the way I just am not overworking his beak I started with the orange undertone and then I put his regular beak on top and it looks a little maybe clownish but that's the way these little birds they have kind of a clown like little smile and um, so I just left it as is and um, I feel very happy with the way this is turning out And so like I said this is the very first in a group I'm doing this month of <clears throat> birds with blossoms the next one I'm gonna do is a, another bird that's in Illinois this little tufted tip mouse I'll just add is um, a year-round resident of Illinois he's a tough little guy um, or a lady and um, the next one I'm gonna do is the um, the Carolina silver bell blossoms with a Baltimore Oriole and I thought they would look nice together because the Baltimore Oriole um, has some really 
vibrant colors and then just the the silver bells are a white color so it won't be too many uh, colors going on at once so I thought that would be fun to try so that'll be my next painting for the spring birds and I don't um, have to stick with uh, flowering trees in Illinois but um, I'm gonna start with those just because I'm familiar with most of them and um, so it's kind of got a personal uh, meaning to me. I hope you enjoyed this video and this painting is right this moment available in my shop. If you like this video, subscribe to get more like this. Thanks for watching. Thank you.